Okay, everyone, welcome. Uh, and welcome to WordCamp, yes. Um, this is great, this is my third WordCamp, my first time actually presenting at one, however, but my wonderful uh, local WordCamp groups, in which some of those people are represented here, were uh, very kind to me in helping me get some of these things presented. I'm Marianne Shu. Uh, I live in Rochester, New York, and I did drive in last night, not this morning, because I wouldn't have made it. Um, I've been in WordPress Wartland for about three years, but I've been developing websites for over 16. And so I don't know if this will come as a shock or come as comfort to you, but everything you're learning, I had to learn from scratch just like probably anybody else who's starting WordPress from scratch, despite actually 40 years of programming computers. So I don't know what that says about me, but this WordPress brings its own challenges in terms of getting to know it as a beginner. I think once you're inside and you're comfortable with the innards, it's a fantastic tool. But getting there is a real journey, and that's what I'm going to take you through today. All right. Now, again, for those of you who just came in over here, it's bit.ly with all those letters. Make sure you do the capitals. Um, I have my slides on uh, there. It's a zip file. There are two of them. I have the main slide deck, and then I have what I call my resources slides. The resources slides have everything I wish I could have covered <laughs> in the 50 short minutes that I have here. Uh, but I also put a lot of links and so forth. So a lot of my research I did to put this together is consolidated and put in the resource slides so that you can somehow catch up. Now, the other thing I'm going to tell you is that some of this, even at the end of my presentation, as good as I am, um, will not necessarily make sense to you. My goal today is to give you enough information to have the right words to ask questions and the right words to search for to find things. Knowing the language of what you're dealing with is half the battle. Has anyone in here ever had a family member with a serious medical condition? Okay, and so the main reason I found my mother's doctors, for example, very helpful is I found the medical terminology I could use to go to the internet to find out what was really wrong and what the options were, okay, and educate myself on her stuff, okay. So that's kind of what my goal is today. So um, if you're welcome to ask any question you like, but please understand if I say we can either, t I'll be here for the next two days, corner me anytime. I had a badge that's over there, so I won't bother the mic. Um, Calling me anytime, I'll be happy to answer probably even more than you want to know, uh, everything I've learned about this so far. Okay, so you can download the slides. Um, I'm a consultant. Um, I left corporate America in 2000 and started my own website design and development business. Um, and then uh, I added business and productivity work. I work with small businesses, and I found they often needed help, beyond, definitely beyond the website, to get information I needed for the website. So I do a lot of consulting as well. It's a lot of fun. I am very passionate about learning and writing and teaching, and I love office supplies. I have an addiction. <laughs> the, uh, the, the Microsoft guys out there, they have moleskin notebooks. I only took two. I am really resisting the rest out there. I love moleskin notebooks. So basically, this is the question I want to answer as much as I can for you today is, OK, no matter whether you, all you know is you want a website, or in my case, okay, I know I want a website and I want to develop the way I always did. What do I need to know? Okay, how do I make it happen in the WordPress environment? All right? So. I'm going to take you through just three things today. As I found out, okay, the host decision is a major decision that guides much of what you can do in a WordPress environment. Again, I've always worked in the self-hosted environment, which I will go over a little bit today. Um, so I didn't run into a lot of those... Um, issues, but I found in my Word, uh, by the way, how many of you belong to your local WordPress meetup? Just a couple? Okay, well, if you don't belong to a local WordPress meetup, look for one in your area. They are tremendous sources of support and fun and information. Um, so I have learned through attending my, uh, I'm a member of both of Buffalo and the Rochester uh, meetups, that a lot of the people who come in have questions that I'm hopefully answering here today. So that's why um, I thought it would be valuable to put this together. The hosting decision, what you, where you host depends on how much you already know about hosting, how much you're willing to learn, and how much flexibility and control do you want over your ultimate WordPress website. Okay? Then we're going to talk about um, the WordPress options at a very high level, and also what about what, uh, what I call key plugins. Part of what I'm saying today is my opinion, so you can take it for what it's worth, but it comes after three solid years. <laughs> of learning, and I've got scars here to prove it. Um, so I, I'm going to talk about a couple key plugins I found that I was astonished they weren't already included. Okay. And third, we're going to talk a little bit about more plugins, 
a little bit um, about added very briefly about adding page posts and media and also talking about uh, customizing. And again, it's all going to be very high level. You'll have uh, the rest of the conference has many presentations which will take you through a lot of the details, especially on these two things. I'm going to spend probably half my time on the hosting decision because that's the one area I've never really seen at a uh, WordPress conference and I think it will be useful for people. Okay? So I've made assumptions. Is there anyone here who's never even set up and run a, web, a WordPress site? Okay, well then bear with me. I hope we won't lose you too far. And, and feel free to make notes where you have questions and corner me later. Okay, if I, if I lose you, I don't want to do that. Um, you need a solid site, okay? I'm in business, so my sites have to work for my clients, okay? Not to mention my own site has to work for me. Um, and by the way, my own sites are never represent <coughs> what I can do because I never spend the time on them that I do my client sites. But anyway, so, that, so with that mindset, that's why you'll hear me talking heavily about backups. Okay, if, uh, if you need a solid site, you have to understand very quickly and get to know and understand what your backup options are. Because believe you me, I mean, I've gone, made mistakes to the point where I had to call my host and have them reload everything I already had from the beginning because I didn't have the right backup. Okay, so take it from me. You don't want to do that if you don't have to. So for those of you, all right, so how many of you have a WordPress site you're working on? Okay, of those, how many of you are, sel are uh, like, uh, self-hosted? You, you've been sold, just a few. Okay, cool. So you guys can keep me honest, right? If I lie, you let me know, all right. <laughs> for the rest of you, okay, if you're moving, so how many are, self are uh, doing like uh, a managed WordPress or doing WordPress.com? Nobody? Okay, so, okay so, where are the, so the rest of you don't have a site? Okay, good, all right, well, we'll find out, okay. And then, I'm also assuming that you, like, I like to be organized. I don't like to waste time if I don't have to. So I operate a lot on checklists. So I'm going to give you a checklist today. Um, if you're more free form than that, that's great. Um, and then you can just kind of tune out during that part. But just pay attention <laughs> to the content because what I'm, what I'm telling you, teaching you, is what I learned is the best order in which to do these things. You may already know the steps, but these are the order that after putting, I don't know, several dozen sites together, both live and, and practice, this is what I've learned about them. And then you update the checklist as you learn. Okay, so we're going to go through the hosting decision first. Your hosting decision drives your domain name choice. Who knew, okay? So if you're starting from scratch and you've never done WordPress before, all right, it, we'll talk very, a little bit about WordPress.com in a minute. And if you go with the WordPress.com choice, the part on the left, the, I think this thing's got a pointer. I'll try to do this without blinding anybody. Oops, no, I didn't need to do that. Try that. No? Okay, never mind. Um, X, Y, Z, one, two, three, five, well, it's supposed to be four, five, six, but anyway, um, that's the kind of domain name you'll get. So even if you want, you know, mypetcat.com, if you're going to go with WordPress.com as a free site, you're going to have to go with that longer domain name because that's the way they work. Okay, we'll talk a little more in a minute how to change that. Or you can have your own registered domain name. And you, if you do WordPress.com, you're going to have to pay them uh, a few dollars a year in order to use that. All right, we'll go over that in a little bit later. So, and then where's your domain registered? Are you going to register through the host, which is fine, it works, that's a great place. If you've already got it registered someplace else, there's an impact there. And then how does the domain name get connected to the host? Okay, so these are the technical details. Before you can even have WordPress to work on, these are things you have to be aware of that somebody has to either do for you or you have to learn to do it yourself. Backups, okay. Does your, does your hosting company do any form of WordPress backup? Every hosting company does a full site backup. They have to for the same reason to protect you know, your work and, so that they, they, uh, and protect Sounds against any damage they may go through. Right. Um, or do they only back up the entire site? Um, and then if they do backups, do you have any access to those? In some cases you do, some cases you don't. Okay, and then what about tech support from the hosting service? There's something else to think about. Personally, I don't go with anybody that doesn't offer 24-7 phone support with a real life human on the other end. It, I don't like email and I don't like chat. It takes too darn long to write it out. I can get, take, I'd rather wait 20 minutes to get them on the phone and then spend two minutes getting my answer than spend a, third, you know, a half an hour typing everything back and forth. Okay, do you want an email account associated with your domain name? That's something else you have to think about, all right? Um, and then how many accounts can you have with it? That's another factor. Which themes can you use? Your hosting decision has a factor, uh, uh, an impact on that. Which plugins you can use, if any? 
Um, who does WordPress core and security updates? Is it going to be you or the hoster or what? Um, and then what about uh, practice, uh, protection and recovery from the bad guys? Okay, who's going to help you take care of that? So that's something to think about even before you get into WordPress. Even if you don't know much about WordPress, these are some things you need to understand whether or not you have the ability to do. So I have a series of diagrams that are here. I'm not necessarily going to go through all the details in each one because they're meant to be lists for you to look at. But so there's two types of WordPress hosting out there. There's what's called managed WordPress hosting, which is a relatively new phenomenon. Uh, WordPress.com, I think, was one of the first of, us of that kind. And then there's what's been around for a long, long time, the ordinary, run-of-the-mill, self-hosted websites. Managed WordPress hosting, what, the reason it's managed is means what they do is they take care of installing WordPress for you. That's pretty much it, OK? Um, as part of the initial hosting setup. So when you press submit and you, you know, plunk down your credit card for that hosting agreement, OK, and then they send you nice emails and everything else, what you get is a fully a, a site ready for uh, in, uh, with WordPress with a default theme installed, and you're ready to go from there. So they install WordPress in the MySQL database that's required to make it happen. It may have limited storage. So there's a lot of limits and other things. You don't have any access to the WordPress core files or database. Um, core updates are done by the host, and it may, they may provide malware scans and fixes. They may or may not, depends on who they are. By the way, this term is not to be confused with managed hosting service. In a lot of companies, website companies, you'll see, uh, hosting companies, you'll see the term managed hosting. What they mean there, that's a much higher level of support, is basically you're essentially leasing an entire server from them and letting them manage it for you on your behalf. Okay, that's not what this is. So if you're looking for this, make sure you're looking for managed WordPress hosting, not managed hosting. It's very different. All right. Okay, so what does this look like? Okay, there's your browser over there, and here's the internet. I originally, my original diagrams, I had a cloud, but I thought, well, we don't need, we don't need the cloud anymore. Everybody knows it's the cloud, right? So, I'm talking about two different types here. We're at a WordPress conference. I know at my meetup groups, I hear a lot of questions about what's WordPress.com versus WordPress.org. I'm going to help you understand that today if you don't already know it, okay? But WordPress.com is, is just one example of the category managed WordPress sites, okay? WordPress.org is where you get the free WordPress software itself. It's not a hosting company. You just go there and you can get plugins and themes and all kinds of stuff from them. You get software from them. WordPress.com is a hosting company run by the company uh, um, called Automatic is the actual name of the company that runs that. That uh, is Matt, what's his name? Muhlenweg's uh, company. All right, and they offer free WordPress.com, which I have is best by my research is the only place on the planet that I know of right now you can actually get a free uh, WordPress.com website, a WordPress website. Uh, everybody else either has at most like a free trial and then you have to pay, at least so far. So if I has found one, let me know. Um, they also offer paid plans called premium and business. I'm not going to go over those today. So everything I'm talking about in WordPress.com today is simply about their free service as a comparison. The rest of these, um, at least the, at the time I was creating these slides, these three uh, companies are um, sponsors, so I thought it would be nice to talk about what they offer. Um, as far as I know, last time I knew of the three plan and hoster on their website, I couldn't find anything that said manage WordPress. I'm going to stop by later and ask them um, about that. So if you go to any of these companies as of about two weeks ago, I, or a week ago when I finished these, these were the names. Uh, if, if they offer... Um, um, what do you call it? WordPress, managed WordPress hosting, those are the names you'd look for. Okay? Just be aware they may change the names. Yes, ma'am? Are they charging US dollars? You'd have to ask them. Um, um, yeah, I mean, their pricing is in, uh, when I, because I'm from the US, so what I saw was the US version, so yeah. But you can take a look. I'm, uh, they <laughs> yes, yes. Probably, I don't know, the, the good question. Those are good questions, but yeah, you would have to. Um, so, when I, so, so you'll see in the slides that are coming up, I compare, at the bottom, I compare what WordPress.com offers versus what these offer. So you'll be able to make some decisions, I hope, about them, okay? So, 
you decide on a domain name, we talked about that already. So if you're going to go with WordPress.com, you're going to need to figure out, you, you, you have to figure out what this first part is, okay? You don't have a choice. Later on, you can add a custom domain once you have the WordPress.com account. But at least to start up, you've got to figure out what that is. Now, you can leave it as this for as long as you like, okay? Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want a custom domain, you have to do something different. Um, for, for everybody else, you, you have to have some sort of a registered domain name. Now, you can register it through them as part of the startup process when you uh, host with them. Um, or you can buy it from some other place and just have it on hand, all right? Um, I, they're not here, but my, I, the, same, the domain company I have used for 16 years is directnick.com, D-I-R-E-C-T-N-I-C.com. Um, they have been fabulous. They've even gone bought out, but they're still very good. Um, so I've used them for years. They're excellent. Okay, so I'm going to start taking you through this diagram. You're going to see variations of this through this part of the presentation. So up at the top, at this point, you press submit, you've plunked down your credit card, you get an email from them with some information on it, okay? They're going to give you the um, email, the, excuse me, the link for your, um, I wrote it down, hosting.com, but your uh, WordPress control panel, your WordPress admin area, okay? So once you hit submit, bam, okay, you already have the domain name, bam, the hosting server gets set up, the dashboard gets set up, the default WordPress theme is set up. One, two, three, that's all set up for you. So when you log in, that's already there. Whether or not you have email accounts varies. WordPress.com does not provide email accounts. You have to get them like through Gmail or someplace else. Others, it depends on the host. Some do, some don't. And WordPress is installed as you do that, okay? So that's it. So once you hit it, that's what you've got as soon as you're ready to go. Now, once you're in there, you can install another theme, maybe. The last I counted or the last number they provided on their site, WordPress.com is 361 <laughs> free or paid themes. So you're very likely to find something very nice in there. With the others, the theme choice may depend on the host. I didn't take the time to go into that depth with everybody else, but some may also limit which ones you can choose, okay? Now, why might somebody limit your choice of theme? Support? Support, say more. Who said that? Oh, you do, excuse me. Why? That's excellent. Exactly, yeah. So they have to have someone who knows that theme. That's right, okay. So it's, that's, that's like with WordPress.com, I don't know if you know this, I didn't know this, I learned this at Scranton WordPress, uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania had their first web WordPress earlier this year. Um, WordPress.com itself is a multi-site installation of WordPress. Anybody want to take a guess how many sites they run as a multi-site installation? Uh, 200 million plus. Yeah, can you believe that? So as part of that, <laughs> they can't have you coming in with a cowboy theme, uh, sorry, U.S. reference, but a cowboy theme, you know, something wacko out there that they haven't got a clue. As, you might go in and break something unwittingly, you know. I'm assuming everybody in here is not going not to do any damage, okay? Okay. Now, can you install a plugin? Maybe. Again, WordPress.com on, on their sites, they tell you, and in, in, in the resources deck I talked about, I have, um, I, tell, I have lots of links in there. If you want to know more about this stuff, you can go in and look at the links I already found for you that explain this. They state that they already include, and they tell you what, um, various types of what are very popular, what they have thought were very popular plugins are already included in your WordPress.com installation. And that's why they don't let you install anything else, okay? So if you... There's something you want, and it's in a WordPress. Excuse me, it's in a plugin, and it's not covered in WordPress.com. By definition, you're going to have to go to self-hosting, okay? Or look at a managed, another managed host and see if they'll let you do it. So, other ones that depends on the host. Many of them have a list of blacklisted plugins, all right? Um, and they don't allow you to install backup plugins. I'll explain that in a second. So. In terms of backup, okay, WordPress.com does do WordPress backups of your site, your, your whole thing, not just the core, but everything. But how often they do it, I couldn't find any place on their site where they publicize how often they do it. And you have no access to that to restore something should something go wrong. Okay, and you can't install a backup plugin to run it. Now, don't forget, WordPress itself was initially designed as a simple blogging platform. 
And this kind of stuff isn't necessarily critical, although someone who's got hundreds of blog posts might argue <laughs> the point. Okay, but I think this is kind of a legacy decision that, in my opinion, they're going to have to rethink. That's just my opinion. Okay, um, others do a backup by host, and they keep a rolling 30-day WordPress backup of your site, and you can install it through what they call one-click install, one-click restore. Excuse me. Okay, so a lot of the other managed hosting companies recognize the need for this and give you access to that. But again, they won't let you install your own backup because they can screw up their backup. <laughs> Everybody still with me? Have I lost you there about how complicated this is? Okay, now, when you get WordPress, it doesn't matter where you get it, you install it yourself or it's WordPress.com, you get this function that many of you probably haven't paid a lot of attention to called WordPress, I think I've got it backwards, I think it's export import. Okay, depending on the WordPress installation you're using, at the very least you can export your posts and possibly pages to your hard drive and just save them. I mean, you can't do anything to them. All you can do is import them into another WordPress, but at least you have them. So if you're in WordPress.com, they actually let you export more than just that. But the basic function that's been there from the beginning at least allows you, I believe, to export both pages and posts. But that's about it. So, so you do have an option to at least not lose <laughs> all that content you spent hours sweating over. Okay. Um, in WordPress.com, they actually talk about it, and that's why they give more information, and they also, they've expanded what it exports more than your average WordPress install. So if you need to use import-export, you know, go back to the WordPress.com and make sure you understand, you, and you can see, look all this stuff up. Again, I give you the links in the resource decks um, to find out if that's adequate for what you want to do right now, okay? If you're just getting started, that may be more than enough. Okay, malware scan and fixes. Okay, WordPress.com, bless their hearts. Of course, they have to do it because they're running 200 million sites out there. So they go in and they fix it. I couldn't find anywhere whether they tell you. I don't think they notify you at all. Which you, if they fix it, that might be fine. You know, who cares? But um, with others, it depends on the host. It may be included, or uh, you may be able to up pay an upgraded fee beyond your hosting fee to have them do the malware scans and repairs for you. Wait, what this basically means is they're on, they've got your back. Okay? Otherwise, if you don't have this service, your site gets hacked, you're on your own. Okay? I did find a great um, link, which I didn't put in here uh, the other day. I sent, sent it to our group, and I'll have to go back and look it up. But there was a great link about what to do when you've been hacked. It was a great um, article about it. All right? And lastly, in the managed WordPress environment, okay, uh, tech support, in the free version, all you have is community support forms that are populated by people like you. And I don't mean to say that in any way that denigrates that, okay? Every peer-to-peer -peer works really, really well in the WordPress community. But if you're having more problems than that, you j there's nobody you can call under the free plan. If you upgrade, I believe, to the, what's the next one? Premium, I think you have an email um, support. If you upgrade to the full business, you get chat support. Okay, so that's why I say if you are a beginner, find your local WordPress meetup. If there isn't one, see if you can start <coughs> one. It's not too hard to start one so that you have a, your local community as well as a resource to go to. Okay, any quick questions on managed WordPress hosting? I went through a lot there. So far, I'm not seeing too many glazed over looks. I'm working on it, but I don't see any yet. Okay. All right, now we're going to talk about the general, excuse me, Oh, I'm sorry, right in front of you. Um, uh, confuse me, so uh, on um, external hosting, uh, you are limited to the plugins which they are offering? Okay, in WordPress.com, what yeah. they've done is they've taken WordPress okay. and they've um, added to the basic software that they use only to them, and they've added more functionality. So it's kind of like WordPress, th their own version of WordPress software with that function built into the basic system. That's WordPress.com. Yeah. And, okay. and they, excuse me, and then they don't allow any other plugins. Oh, yeah. Now, but the managed hosting by everybody else gives you the basic WordPress software. What plugins you can use depends. On the host. On the host. Mm -hmm. You'll have to look at the host. They'll have places on there look in their support network and, and see if you can find a list of what they call blacklisted plugins, plugins they don't allow. Uh, that is very yeah. So I'm 
limited to what they are offering? On the, on the managed site, yes, but it's, it's, it's more than what WordPress.com offers. Okay, but yes, you you may so there may be there may be. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time, and I to you you need to go through and look. You have to some more than others. They, that whole community like there's no one single definition of what managed WordPress means. So every hosting company makes a business decision about how much flexibility they'll offer you. WordPress.com made certain decisions. Bluehost may make certain decisions. Hostgator may make certain decisions, and they may vary. So you'll have to check with the host or call. There's almost always a sales number you can call. You may not be able to get support, but you can call sales and ask. Yeah, you just know what to ask, like you said. Yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Okay, now this is self-hosted plans have been out there since forever. That's hosting. You know, you're, when I since when, back in the day when websites were just HTML, not even CSS. Tells you how far back I go. Um, that's what you ran on. Okay, so over the years. What's happened is now content management systems, okay, there's WordPress, there's Joomla, there's Drupal, I knew there was another one. Who else am I forgetting? Yeah, there's a whole bunch out there, okay. These are systems that sit on top of their op operating systems, okay. So now they've organized themselves to help you with that, all right. But it's completely up to you. When, they, when you sign up with them, you just get a basic site and you'll see that diagram in a second. So in this case, you have to install WordPress. And fortunately, in their install, the MySQL database goes with it. So we won't talk much about this, but you don't have to worry about it. You'll get, quote, unlimited storage. It depends on your hosting plan. Unlimited customization. You can run WordPress, uh, you run WordPress and you can upload any theme you want. You can upload any plugin you want. And whether it works together is all on you. <laughs> if it doesn't work, you'll have to figure it out. You get full access to the WordPress files, core files, and the database itself. So that could be a good thing, and that could be a great place to get in trouble. So just be aware. Uh, you have to update the WordPress core, the themes, and the plugins, okay? So in your WordPress admin thing, you see a lot of those little numbers pop up all the time. Somebody is always updating something. You know, I finish updating, and I happen to go out back into a client site a week later, and there's like four updates. Like, really? I have other things to do, but anyway. Um, and then, you, again, check with your host for malware services. In some cases, again, for an extra fee or maybe they build it in, they will help, they can help with that, all right? So what does that look like? Okay, once again, we start with a browser and the internet, and here's the names of, I, I looked up their cheapest self-hosted plan, which usually, many of them offer like for whatever, let, let's say you go with, like I happen to use HostGator a lot, um, that, um, if you sign up now for the Hatchling service, it's like $4 a month on an annual plan, and you can lock that plan in as far as up for three years. Very cheap. After the three years, however, you don't get the same discount. It's a little bit higher, but you get the upfront discount. So you can see, and again, you have to look for the, um, the exchange rate, uh, depending on what you're trying to do. So, uh, I'm sorry, rate. for uh, US dollars to Canadian or whatever. Um, and again, so I went out here, they, and all these guys offer self-hosting, because again, it's been around a long time. So that's their basic plan as of at least the last week or so before I went online. Okay, what's this look like? Again, in self-hosting, you've got to have your own domain name. You can figure one out as you sign up for the host. That's fine. They're happy to register it for you. Or you could have it someplace else and register there and then uh, get it connected, okay? Um, <coughs> If, it, if you've registered it someplace else, it has to be pointed to your hosting site. It's not her terribly hard to do, but you have to know how to do it or get someone to help you with it if you've never done it before. All right? Okay, so again, boom, you hit submit, you've paid your credit card, they send you a nice email. All right? All you get this time is all you get is a control panel to the host itself and email accounts and site backup and storage. But it's not WordPress. I mean, because they back up your entire site, WordPress is in included, but it's not isolated. It's everything around your site is what they back up. And again, that's as much for their protection as it is yours. All right? So they, and they, uh, usually they run weekly backups, and you can request the stores of the entire site only. Ask how, how I know. So I said, I've had to ask them when I mess something up. I asked had to go back and have them restore my entire site and start over. 
So you can do that. Email accounts, yes, and they'll use your domain name, and then you set those up through the control panel. How many of you have ever looked at a control panel? About half the group, okay. For the other half, brace yourself, we're gonna look at one, very briefly. This happens to be for HostGator. So you're, this is what's called the cPanel version. There's other con control panel software out there, but cPanel is one of the most common. Okay, so up here, I don't know if you can read it back there, but up this block up here is where you manage your email accounts, and way down here, down in this tiny little, um, boom, click install. That's the button you're gonna push to install WordPress. So just so, so if you haven't seen this before, you're gonna need to spend time getting familiar with your host control panel before you start pushing buttons. I recommend that anyway, all right? So, we've already, so you've already had the blue part is already set up now. When you go in through that quick stall, quick, quick install as it's called there, I kept, everybody kept saying about the one, one click install. I kept looking for the words one click. Finally somebody told me, no, it's called quick install. Hello, okay, I'm a newbie, be kind, you know. All right, anyway, so you get your WordPress dashboard, you get a whatever the default theme, I did everybody, what's the latest no, uh, theme we're up to in WordPress, anybody? All right, so we got somebody who's up to date in here, okay. And then default plugins. Now the interesting thing about the plugins is if you, um, I think if you, no matter, so if you're installing WordPress under this, you automatically get the Akismet plugin. Why, anybody know? <coughs> Right, exactly. So in that case, you, you may like if you don't have a blog on your site, you don't need WordPress. You don't need a Kismet, but it's there. It's not activated yet because you have to pay to activate it, but that's there. So be aware, even when you install in a self-hosted site, you're going to see some plugins show up, like I did the first time I saw it, and like, what the heck is this? What's this thing called Jetpack? Huh? Okay. So it depends who they are. It's, it's not that they're doing anything wrong. It's nothing sneaky, but just be aware when you do this, you can in uninstall them and let them go. What's the other default? Um, no, that's something else. Never mind. Never mind. The other thing I was going to talk about is the common. Um, okay. So quick install installs the WordPress environment, the default theme, any default plugins that they happen to provide, okay, and they email the admin login information to you, okay. And again, the same WordPress import export is available to you. So let's say you're moving from self-hosted on WordPress.com or a managed WordPress.com, a uh, managed WordPress site, you can export your content and import it to here. Okay? You cannot migrate from necessarily from a managed WordPress site. In other words, take your whole setup and move it. You can only take the uh, uh, content. No, none of that. It takes pages and, and posts. Oh, just that? Yes. Unless you're running WordPress.com. That that's it. It's a, yeah, it's a very small piece of it. That's why, that's why I'm trying to have you understand. Because when you're on WordPress.com or those managed hosts, okay, they're not going to let you take that theme with you. I, know, I don't think on WordPress.com you can do that. You, you, you have, they don't give you a way to migrate it out. You need a full WordPress backup do that and one that allows you to be migrated. If you don't have that, all you can take with you is the pages and posts for the most part. Um, yeah. One, one sure, sure. So you know you can do is what you've exported is only import it back into That's the correct. exact same site. You can't take it anywhere. Like you've got a backup of it, but it's really only good to import back. No. Site. If, if you're using WordPress import export, you can import. So let's say I've got a WordPress.com site and I export all my um, posts and pages. I can import that into any WordPress installation of any kind anywhere. But it's just the pages and posts. You're not getting the theme, you're not getting the plugins, all that stuff. You're just getting the raw content that you, you're not even getting the images, by the way. That's a whole other thing. You're not, it depends. Oh, well, okay, I haven't used it in a while, so. Okay, all right, so I stand, I, I stand corrected. All right, so you'll get images, content, excuse me, images, pages, and posts. That's it. Okay? Very good. Good questions. Okay. How am I doing on time? 
15 oh geez. Okay. Um, so again, the theme and plugin choices are plug to you. The host doesn't do the automatic WordPress updates anymore. Okay, you've got to update the core. When you hear everybody you, on your, your WordPress feed, everybody's talking about the latest security breach in WordPress and you, there's a new fix out, guess who gets to update that? You, not the host. Okay. Get up. No, Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. The, um, you're right. Okay, it depends. Okay, you can turn off. Like, frankly, again, I've been a developer a long time. I don't like WordPress going in and updating something without me knowing about it. Because for all I know, they're going to break my site. So I will update it myself. Okay. okay. But word, he's right. WordPress now the setting you can have in your, which is set as a default, is the default now, that WordPress will automatically update every time a new release comes out. But they don't update just when a security release comes out. They update when everything comes out. Okay. So you can have WordPress.com, excuse me, you can have the WordPress people update your site for you from the, the core, but your themes and plugins you'll still do yourself. Again, that gets into, I've been a developer too long, working with too many different parts to let one part do something un unattended while I'm trying to do other things, so I, I don't like that to happen. Um, Self-hosting, um, again, so WordPress software you update, or let WordPress update the core anyway. Uh, and run backups. Whether or not you get malware scans, it depends. And again, look for 24-7, in my opinion, look for 24-7 phones. You, can, you don't pay m any more extra for that or very little extra for that, and it is worth it to talk to a real human, intelligent human at the other end. Okay. Okay, now, WordPress options and key plugins. I'm giving you a checklist. Since all of you have had experience with, except a few exceptions, uh, WordPress here. I'm going to show you. It's all the stuff you already know how to do, but I'm giving you the order in which I now do them that I have learned through time and trial and error that works for me. All right. I strongly suggest you keep a notebook. This is my second one. If I didn't have these, I'd be in real trouble, especially as someone new in the world, the WordPress world. But even when I was a developer for, I worked for General Electric, I worked for Kodak, I worked for Xerox, I worked for places like that, I kept the notebook. <coughs> I don't trust my memory as to what I did when. If I want to go back in and figure out when, the, when was the last, okay, I've got a problem now. How far back do I want to go and what I've done to, I run backups very frequently. How far back do I need to go so that I can get back to where I was and start over? Okay, you are now all software developers. If you're using WordPress, you are now software developers. And this should be, I can't emphasize this enough, and you need a bigger notebook than they nicely give you at the Microsoft thing. You need a big one, okay? And so, as I say, you write down what you did, you write down what happened, write down how you got out of trouble, very important, <laughs> at least for me, and then adjust your checklist as needed. Yes, uh, four minutes? Oh, geez. Uh, how are you? I'm going by her because I started late, so, okay, I'm, I'm taking the full time. Um, so, you already know how to do these things, and again, if you want to see which dashboard button to push to do these in the resource slides, I have all of that in there. I just didn't want to take the time here to go through it, and I have a lot more detail about picking those, okay? But you, you log into the dashboard, you do this, and if you can, we're in self-hosted now, self-hosted, you can install and configure a backup plugin. To my view, that's the first key plugin you should do before you do anything else, is install a black backup plugin. And then, so what I do is I get it, I install it, and after I've done all these other nice things, which are my basic WordPress settings and everything else that I don't want to have to go back and rethink, I run a backup, even though it's the default theme. Okay, so I have it if I need it. Okay, and then run your first manual backup. Now, all right, so now you want to do more with this, right? Because you didn't do this just to deal with the defaults. Again, more steps. All right, so now install other key plugins. This is one I found out the hard way. Um, you upload files, like an image, to a um, page. Like I just recently had new um, professional photos taken. So I go, you know, I name it the same, and I, I, I would upload it to my WordPress file. And then I'd go to my About page, and the photo wouldn't show up. I was like, what? Well, it turns out 
WordPress, by default, doesn't overwrite. So when I set, put, uploaded the second version, it put the little parenthesis one in parenthesis after it and renamed the file. It didn't overwrite what was there. It created a new file. Therefore, the link in my about page failed. Duh. I mean, I, you know, the, the, almost every other system I've ever worked with will ask you, that file already exists. Do you want to overwrite or not? They don't do that. So just be aware of this. This took me a while to figure out. Then huh, I found out, you know, over uploads is a plugin that'll do that for you. Okay, so I did. No, do it through the, the the media the media library upload through FT through, through the media library. Yeah, yeah, through through the WordPress dashboard. Yeah, if it was FTP, a different story. Yeah, FTP would ask. Yeah, no, no. This is through the media library. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, it's the media. Okay. So then, in my case, I say I know it sounds ridiculous, but I up run another backup. Now, create a few pages and posts, or you can import your posts and pages now from other places if you have those. Okay, and again, you still got the default theme. All right, you're still keeping it simple. <laughs> all right, and you import the content. And again, see the resources slide. Now you get to go do all the wonderful stuff that you're going to learn about through the rest of the day. Why did you say don't upload videos? I'm about to go through that oh. in just a second. Okay. Uh, well, I'm sorry, I didn't. You're right, I didn't. Uh, right. Uh, you need to check with your host, okay? Uploads on, if you have, if you're storing uploads on your site, I'm not talking about YouTube, we have regular run-of-the-mill videos. Most hosts don't like it. Number one, it requires video streaming technology and your average self-hosted account is not priced or set up to run streaming video. So that means whoever views your video is going to get all the, remember those old-fashioned starts and stops we used to get while it was buffering? That's what they'll get. If you want to put video on your site, upload it to YouTube. It's all free, and then you can embed YouTube in your site. And in fact, if, you're, if, you, if you ignore the hosting, or if you ignore that and you put too many videos on your site, your host will shut you down because they're saying, hey, this is your site. Okay. Adjust your style, set up your widgets, and run backups as needed, okay? And then also set your backup software to run automatic backups. I mean, you just can't have too many backups. Okay. Now, I don't expect you to see, understand all this now, but what I'm trying to do here is, I'm coming from the perspective, I have this beautiful site, you know, I want to, you know, I've got this, I want the header, I want the menu over here, I want this. That's what I want. Now, where the heck do I go to upload all that? I still haven't completely figured this out, but this is a start to what I've learned about how you, where, where you do that. So, I've done this two ways. Here, I'm looking at it from what's the WordPress method and what does it adjust? The next slide is, okay, if I want to change backgrounds and headers and themes, okay, where do, I, where do I look to adjust? Do I go to the theme to adjust this? So I don't go to a theme necessarily to adjust the widget. I go to widgets. Okay, God bless you, okay? So again, this is something for you, you know, the, the student, this is your homework assignment. Sometimes I study these, <laughs> and my contact info at the end. Call me if you can't figure that out. No, no, no stupid. I know. It's, I, it, I don't have the time. Look, take, ask me after class. I'll be happy to help you with that. It's, okay. yeah, that. And that would be something, that's exactly what I want you to do from here. It's those kinds of questions, write them down, either see me later or just ask almost anybody else. Certainly um, with probably red, red shirt on, they can help you with the answer if I can't. Okay. All right. So what, all I'm doing is giving you a guide of where to look if that's what you want to do. All right. All right. So that's what we finished. Whew, I made it. Okay. Fine. Then, thank you. Okay. Okay, so there's lots of info on uh, WordPress Converse on my slides. There's a, I have a whole comparison chart, so if you want to see all of them on one chart and make a decision, all those, that information I gave you is one chart so you can find it. Um, okay, a recommended book. I Literally a week before I was finishing these slides, I finally found a book that explains all this. <laughs> and it, he has four. This is the beginner one. How of WordPress, uh, Jeff Starr. Uh, cautions about tracking the, and other final tips. Okay, so we're done. Whoop, sorry. There you go, sorry, sorry. And then all the slides are over here, okay? You don't have to wait till the end of the conference, they're all. And the resources decks. All, these slides and the resources decks are over here.